fathers of Planned Parenthood. Hey guys, we're at Tempe Planned Parenthood preaching the gospel, speaking for the voices, so please be praying. Pray that hearts are changed and babies are saved today. We cover your prayers. Thank you guys. A baby in your womb was put there by God. We're here today to offer you help. We're here today to offer you the help that we can adopt your baby. We can offer you free health, financial resources, doctors that will deliver your baby for free. We're here because we care about you and we want to help you. We want you to know that the Bible makes it very plain that to end the life of a child in the womb is murdering God's eyes. Hey guys, like I said, everybody's joining. We are the Bible uh, says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. The gospel, speaking for the voices, but we're here to tell you that there is hope and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Safe today. Please, you. That you can be right, you can be reconciled to God through Christ Jesus. That God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. That we might be the righteousness of God through him. We come out here on Friday mornings to plead for the life of babies. And to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that you may be saved. If you're a dad here today, I would ask you to stand up and be a man. Protect your wife and your children that God has blessed you with. Protect them from the hands of the murderers. Don't allow some man to violate your wife and rip your child to pieces. Stand up and be a man. Be a man and protect your children. The Bible warns that God has appointed a day in which that He will judge men. It says that God has appointed a day in which He will, in, uh, that all men, there's a day appointed that we will die. We will stand before God and give an answer for our lives will stand in the judgment. Planned Parenthood is nothing more than a business who wants your money. They don't care about you. They don't care about your well-being. They want your money and they want your baby parts so they can have baby options. They take the the parts that they don't ruin when they tear your baby out, they take them, auction them off to the highest bidder. There's video proving that. So we come out here because we want you to know that we want your baby. We care about you and your baby. We want your baby to have a life. We want your baby to have the opportunity to to have a life and grow up in a home where, where he, can, he or she can be loved. So we come out here to, to offer help. We come out here to offer the, the hope that there is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to offer you help financially. To offer to help you raise that baby help you financially. Yeah. Put me out, guys. Yep, that's it. Hey, guys. Everybody's joining. We're at, a, we're at uh, Tempe. Planned Parenthood, preaching the gospel, speaking for the voices. Please be praying. Pray the hearts are changed. Pray the babies are saved. We cover your prayers. Thank you, guys. But well, we always have to ask this question. Why do we do things like this? Why do we, as human beings, come to a place to murder our babies, to, to stop the life? The Bible makes it very plain in Psalms chapter, in Psalms 127, chapter 127, verse 3. It makes it very plain that the baby is God's gift, his, his inheritance does. 
Psalm 139 makes it very plain that God puts that baby in the womb. If you read through Genesis, Sarah could not have a baby until God opened her womb. She spent a lifetime of having sexual relations with her husband, but she didn't have a baby until God opened her womb. And when you go on over a couple, a generation over, then you see that Jacob and Rachel, Rachel wanted to have a baby so bad. She, she pleaded with, with Jacob to give her a baby. You guys come from that way, don't you? But she even told him, give me a baby or I'll die. But Jacob said, am I in the place of God? You see, it's not that they weren't doing what it took to have a baby. It was that God had not opened her womb. It was that God had not chosen to give her a baby. So if you have a baby, I want you to know that if there's a baby in your womb, that it was put there by God in His grace. The Bible literally says that God knew your baby in its unformed substance. That God put the baby in the womb and that He is knitting it together. And sometimes people say, well, if that's true, then why do some babies come out? not perfect because we live in a fallen world but God doesn't make mistakes God does not make mistakes you are recreated exactly the way God wanted you to be and your baby is being created exactly the way God wants it to be so we have to ask if this is true if God creates the baby and the Bible tells us that the baby is a gift from God. It's his inheritance to us. Why would we as people choose to stop the life of the baby? Why would we as people take it upon ourselves to end that life? The answer is found in Genesis. The reason that we do these things is because of our first parents. Because we are deceived as Eve was. We are deceived. The Bible tells us that when God created the world, He basically did everything by the... He just said, let it be. Let the world... Let there be light. Let the, let the earth bring forth vegetation. But when he created man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he did something different. He didn't say let it be. He said, let us create man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over all things. Have dominion of everything. And then we go over to Genesis chapter 2 where, where God hones in. He doesn't, in Genesis chapter 1, God gives an overview of, of all creation that He created. But in Genesis chapter 2, He hones in on just the man and the woman. And God says to them, He says, You can eat from all the trees of the garden. The last thing that God created was man because He wanted the world ready for them when they came. He wanted the world, he didn't want to bring them into a world where there was no food and there was nothing there. He brought them into a world created. And he created them, male and female. Not many other sexes, but male and female. He didn't create other other nas or, uh, races. There's one race, one human race. He created them, male and female. And then God brings them into this garden and He says they can have the, tr the fruit of every tree in the garden but one. Every fruit in the garden hey but guys, one. He didn't leave them in. with nothing. We are at, uh, he gave them plenty to eat. Ten people in but He said they couldn't eat from that one or they would die. Please be praying, pray the hearts change and they be saved. And then in chapter 3, the devil comes down and he enters into a snake and he speaks to Eve and he says that God say that you cannot eat from any of the trees of the garden. 
And Eve says, no, God didn't say. He said we could eat from all the trees of the garden except for this one. In the middle of the garden, we can't eat from it. We can't even touch it or we will die. And the devil says this. Now I want you to think about this. That God had said in Genesis chapter 2, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. And the devil says, you will not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat of it, you will become like God, knowing good from evil. And Eve, instead of running, Adam, instead of protecting his wife, Adam was there. Eve goes and she looks at that tree and she lusts after it. And she takes from it and she eats from it. And she gives to Adam who was with her, who did nothing to stop her, who was not deceived. If you go all the way over into 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, it says, The man was not deceived, but the woman deceived fell into transgression. Adam is guilty because he was not deceived. He did not think that they would become like God, but he did. He thought they would become like God. And I submit to you here today that you and I are the descendants of Eve. The Bible warns us in Galatians chapter 6. It says, Be not deceived. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. I want you to think about that. It says, be not deceived. There's other places in the Bible that the Bible warns us to not be deceived. First Corinthians chapter 6 it says do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived neither fornicator nor idolaters nor adulterers nor homosexuals nor sodomites nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Why would the Bible say, do not be deceived? Why does the Bible tell us in Galatians, do not be deceived? Because we are Eve's descendants. We can be deceived. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Just because we do those things which God has commanded us not to do does not mean that God is mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Well, what is the flesh? How do we sow to the flesh? What is that? It says, now the works of the flesh are evident in Galatians 1 chapter back, Galatians 5. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, they, the, the Corinthians were deceived. They thought that they could go on living in their sin and, and inherit the kingdom of God. Just like many of us today, we're deceived. We think that God doesn't look. We think that God doesn't see. We think that God doesn't care. We think that we can go on living in our sins and somehow make it right by some something that we do. But the Bible says that these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Over in Galatians chapter 6 it says, for he who sows to the flesh will not 
For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Imagine that. We will reap everlasting life. That's why we need Jesus. You see, we can we can bake the fruits of the Spirit for a time. We can we can make people think that we are Christians, but we can't do it for long. Ma'am, would you come and let us help you today? So if I'm reaping, if I'm sowing to the Spirit, what does that mean? It means the fruits of the Spirit, it means the Holy Spirit's fruits are coming from me. They're not my fruits, they're His fruits that He produces. It says, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. You and I need a Savior because we are deceived. Hey guys. Everybody's joining. We are at uh, Timothy, Christ, Planned Parenthood, preaching the gospel, speaking to the voiceless. I'll be and you praying. might think, well, I got up this Pray morning without Jesus. Heart, I came here to murder my baby without Jesus. But no, you please. didn't. Because we cover every your breath, prayers. according to Acts 17, so, every cover your breath prayers. you take today is given to you God, by God in His grace. We love our neighbor and we love ourselves. And, and even Jesus, though God knew exactly what you were voices, going to do today, so please be praying. He still gave you breath if you're close in to His grace being, and His long um, suffering. You can come out and hold signs and join us in out His here. kindness. So, thank you. He gave you air to breathe. He gave you the sunshine and the vehicle yeah. that brought you here. He gave you the food that you ate today. And one day, you will stand before God. God has appointed a day for all men to die and then stand in the judgment. That day is coming. Everyone you have ever known has died or is going to die. And you will stand before God and give an answer for having murdered the image bearer of God. But back to our first parents. To Adam and Eve in the garden. Eve was deceived. And God had warned that they would die. And a lot of people sometimes say, well, well he didn't, they didn't die, so God lied. But they did. they did. They're not here today, they're dead. They died spiritually that day. And they died physically later on. Would you come and let us help you? We can help you. Would you come and let us offer you help? You will stand guilty before God for the murder of this baby. That baby is God's gift to you. Would you please come and let us help you? We can help you. We will, if you, we will adopt the baby if you want to. Hey guys. Everybody's joining. We're at. You will uh, not walk away from this unscathed. Planned I promise you. Preaching the gospel, speaking for the voiceless. Um, so we, please be praying. You will feel Pray the, the results. Change, babies are saved, to cover Seventy percent of women um, who have a, who murder their babies come through abortion signs, spend the, the rest of their so life struggling would love to have you out here. with depression. Thank you, guys. And thirty percent of those women struggle with suicidal thoughts because they can't deal with. The truth that they have murdered their own child. You see, murder is a terrible thing. If I go across the road and I murder my worst enemy, that's wicked and evil. And the Bible says I should die for it. But the baby in your womb is not your worst enemy. It is God's gift to you. It is your inheritance from God. It is God's grace to put it there. The Bible says that... The baby in your womb is like the bullets that a warrior needs when he's at war. When he's about to be overtaken by his enemies. 
Would you come? I know you're there. I see you. I, can, I know you care. I know you're convicted. Because the word of God tells me that you will be convicted. Would you come from this place and turn from this evil? Let us help you. You won't walk away from this man. Every time you wake up in the dawn in the night, you will dream. Why didn't I listen to that man that God sent? You will wake up and every waking hour you see other little children, you'll wonder, wonder what my child would have looked like. When it comes time for kindergarten to start or first grade, you're going to wonder, well, I wonder what my little baby would have been saying at this point. What would he have been doing? When it comes time to graduate from high school, there's problems. You're going to wonder, what would my baby boy or baby girl have been doing now? How would he have blessed my life? When it comes time for young men in 18 to 20 years, for young men and women to get married, and you see someone else getting married, you're going to see these children they are the age of young people or they are the age that your baby would have been. You're going to wonder, what would my baby be like if I hadn't murdered it? Would I, would I be going to its prom? Would I, be, would I be going to its wedding? To her or his or her wedding? Or his or her prom? You will not walk away on the case. This will affect you for the rest of your life, for as long as you live. Every breath you take from here on, God will remind you of your evil and your wickedness. Please come and let me help you. You will not walk away from this. Don't walk into that place. You will suffer greatly. you come and let us help you today? We have financial aid. We can help you. We're here because we care about you. We care about your soul. We care about the baby in your womb. Would you please come and let us help you? There is hope and forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Please repent from this place of evil, ma'am. Ma'am, repent turn to Christ before it's ever too late. You'll stand before God and answer. What will you do, ma'am, when you wake up in the night and you realize that you have murdered your child? The wind is blowing. There's a tornado coming or there's a huge hey, fire guys, coming or something. You're guilty before God, God having murdered your own child. What will you do with your sin? God might not grant you repentance. The Bible makes it plain that repentance is a gift from God. Repentance is a gift from God and we're here because we want you to have that gift. You might not ever get that chance to repent to turn and to do what is right. We, myself and my, my brothers and sisters in Christ have come here because we care about you. We can help you. But you must come. You must repent from this place of evil and come and let us help you. You cannot stand there you're being deceived right now. You know you're being deceived. You're descendants of Eve, as I am. You're being deceived that it's okay. That if you murder this baby, everything will be all right. I know you're here for a surgical because you're holding your pillow. 
And you're convinced, the culture has convinced you that it's okay. That if you murder this baby, everything will be fine. The culture has convinced you that it's just a mass of cells. It doesn't matter. It's not really a baby yet. But you know it is. And I know it is. You see, the angel Gabriel told the mother Mary, he said, the baby conceived in your womb will save his people from their sins. He called baby Jesus a baby at the moment of conception, an image bearer of God, put there by God. You will not walk away without consequences. I tell my daughter all the time, your actions have consequences. My six-year-old daughter, I tell her, your actions have consequences. So do yours, man. Everything you do has a consequence. You will not walk away on this case. You're being deceived. That if you have this abortion, if you murder this baby, you can have your big screen TV and your education. You're being deceived that there's something wrong with the baby so you have to kill it. You're being deceived that you can't carry this baby. If you're supposed to die, I promise you, you will die. No one can deliver from God's hand. In Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, it says, See now, now see that I, even I, am He, and there is no God besides me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Nor is there any who can deliver from my hand. If you're supposed to get sick, get sick. you're going to get sick. It doesn't matter if you wear a mask. It doesn't matter if you get a shot. If you're supposed to get sick, you're going to get sick. No one can deliver from God's hand. And if you're supposed to be healed, it doesn't matter what happens. You will be healed. I know this for a fact. I had a disease in my body that I was told I could not be healed of. And God chose in His grace to heal me. If you're supposed to die, if the doctor has told you that if you don't have this baby, you will die, then if you have an abortion, you will die anyway. If you're supposed to die, you will die. And having this baby won't make any difference. If you murder the baby, all that will do for you is it will make you a murderer before God and you will still die if you're supposed to die and you'll stand before God as a murderer. If you're not supposed to die, then God is not going to take your life. God is the one who kills and it is God who makes alive. Trust Christ. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness, which is Christ. And God will give you all these other things. Turn to Christ today. Look to Him. Why? Because God made Him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, that we might be the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what happens to you if you are in Christ. If you belong to Him, all that you do, doesn't matter. You can be free from your worries and your cares. You can be free if somebody is mistreating you every day. You can be free from that if you do it in Christ. If you receive that mistreatment in Christ. As can I just help you? You guys don't have to go through here and murder your child. Willingly Please, suffering for Christ. You can be righteous in Christ only through repentance and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. What must you believe? You must believe that Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, 
from eternity past, came to earth and lived, never sinning in thought, word, or deed. And then he went to the cross and he died your sick debt. He paid your wages, your payment, your debt of debt. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Hey guys, everybody's joining. We are at the uh, Trumpy, Montana, you Christian need Gospel. A savior. Speaking to the voice of Someone to stand pray. in your place. I pray the heart to change, baby. You must today. believe in Thank Jesus you Christ. Truly God from eternity past. He's the Word of God. But the Bible says, let there be light. That was Christ. That was Jesus saying, let there be light. But the Bible says, let the earth bring forth vegetation. That was Jesus. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh. Sir, would you stand up and be a man and protect your child? Protect your wife from this place of evil? Let's uh, Jesus Christ is the God man. You will not walk away from this. You will deal with this forever unless you repent. You need Christ. You need Him to save you, to change your heart. You need Him to remove your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh. Sir, would you have mercy on your child today? Would you please come and let us help you? I see you there with the pillow. Would you come and let us help you? tells us that the baby in the womb was put there by God. Why would we want to end that which God has put in the womb? Why would we want to destroy an image bearer of God? Why would you want to destroy that which God gave you hey as guys, an inheritance as his gift to you? Speaking for the voiceless. Think uh, about that. Tempe in Phoenix, Arizona. If it's God's the gift, gospel, speaking for the voiceless. We all like friend. to get gifts. Pray the we like change. to get rewards. Pray that babies are saved today. Um, we, we all have hope for an inheritance. Today. Um, we are Why would you murder here? the Just baby in your womb that is God's gift? Jesus, Jesus. Would you have mercy on your child today? We can help you. We can help you take care of this baby. We could. Adopt it if you need us to. Let us help you. Please come and let us help you. We care about you. We truly love you. We're here because we care about you. Would you come and let us? Like I said, guys, we are aid. here not just to cram Bible verses down our throats as some people have done before. Let us before. help you with. We are here a free to share the gospel. We want to see come those. We want them to know. Christ. Whatever. We want them to come to know Don't Christ. Don't have this on your conscience. Uh, we're also trying to get them to not murder their baby as an Exodus 20. You and I both know that God God exists. Um, so we're God here offering them other resources do. so they don't have the to murder their baby. The Bible says he hears, he knows the very here, thought. So. He knows every so thanks, word that comes out of your mouth before you ever say it. The Bible makes it plain that God is everywhere. The psalmist says, where can I go to escape from your presence? And he says, if I go to heaven, you're there. But he says, if I go to hell and make my bed there, behold, you are there. If I go to the remotest part of the sea, you are there. He 
David says, I can't hide from you in the darkness because darkness and light are a light to you. God sees all that you do. Psalms chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Friends, listen to me. Don't be, this is a place of ungodliness. Don't take counsel from people that are ungodly. Take counsel from those who care about you, who love you. This place doesn't care about you. Planned Parenthood is a place of eugenics. It is a place of trying to control the population. It's a place all they care about is your baby's parts so they can sell them. Literally, it's been proven that they sell baby parts. Imagine somebody having an auction on your baby's heart. Can you imagine that? If somebody rips your baby out of you one limb at a time, and then once you're gone, they take that heart, they take it at an auction, and they stand there, I got a heart here. How about 20, what do you get 20 buy now? 30, 30, to 30, what do you get 30 dollars? How about that on your on your baby's heart? What do you think about that? That's what they do, that's what Planned Parenthood does. They auction off your baby's body parts. Why would you let them do that, man? Would you please have mercy on your child? We can help you. I promise you we can. And if you don't want, if you don't want to have this baby and raise it, we will adopt it. If you are afraid that you can't do whatever, you don't have the money, we'll pay all the expenses from here on. If you want to keep it, we'll walk alongside you and help you raise it in any way you let us. We want to help you. We care about you. We don't want you to deal. Did you know, ma'am, that 70% of women who have abortions spend the rest of their lives struggling with depression? And another 30% of those women struggle with suicidal thoughts for the rest of their life because they can't stand the idea that they took the life of their own child. That God gave them in His grace and His love. This is a gift. It is not a curse, I promise you. I promise you. It is not a curse. Right now it might feel like it. I don't know what situation you are in. But I care. I care. Come and tell me. Let me pray with you. Let me help you. Let me love you. Please come and let me help you, ma'am. What will you do when you get older, ma'am? What will you do in five years from now when you see a little a baby at school? A five-year-old boy or girl and you think, wow, what would my baby look like right now? And you recognize, you realize that you murdered it, that you took its life. What about when that baby is old enough to, to graduate from school or to go to prom? When he or she could go to prom and all the other boys and girls in the neighborhood come out with their fancy gowns and their tuxedos and they're going to prom and you see the pictures on Facebook of all your friends that have children that, that gave life to their children and their children are having all these wonderful times and there's photos. You see that baby and you think, oh my goodness, I took the life of my precious baby. What about when that young girl walks up the aisle with her flowing dress? Ma'am, what will you do when you see that? And remember, it could be your little girl. What about when you get old? What about when you get old and you need someone to take care of you, but nobody cares? You have no one to take care of you. No one cares. I promise you, you will think about that child and think, wow, I guess I deserve this because I didn't care about that baby. I didn't care about my son. I allowed the doctors. I paid the doctors to murder it. Please have mercy on your child. Please, I'm begging you, let me help you. 
I'm hey here guys. for you. Everyone's God, I want you to think about this. Whatever you're going through at this moment, right I want you to know this. Uh, being convicted, that I'm not here by accident. That God sent that God will change her heart to help you. Her have a change of heart to come down God sent me to them. help you. Because she's standing there convicted. Please she's have there mercy on your God. God. So please be praying for her. Pray that her heart will be changed and she'll have mercy on her child. Please. We're asking for prayer right now. Please be praying. She's been standing there for some time. Um, I don't know how long she's been standing there, but for a while now. We please be praying for her. She will come down and have mercy on her child. Let us help her. Cover your prayers this moment. Thanks, guys. I'm very serious. We can help you. We've helped many other women. We're here because we care about you. Would you please have mercy on your child? Why do we do these things? Why do we murder the very blessing that God gives us? The very gift, the inheritance, the reward that God gives us, why do we throw them away? Guys, yeah, pray for this guy. We tried, tried to talk her out of that because he was trying to reason. Ma'am, would you come and let us help you today? We can help you. In America, I was talking about our first parents, Adam and Eve. You know, they were deceived. Adam says the man wasn't, but Eve was, and we are Eve's descendants. The Bible says that in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, it says the man was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. And I submit to you that we are their we are their children, we are their offspring, they are our parents. We are able to be deceived. And in America today, so many people have made up a God in their mind. They say that God is all love, that He would never put anybody in hell. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, spoke more about hell than anyone else. And the Bible makes it plain that there are things that God hates. Bible says in Psalm 5, 5, that God hates all who sin. It says those that are prideful, that are prideful will not ever stand before Him. We come to this place, I want you to imagine the pride that must be in the heart of a man or woman when God sends people to help them and yet they murder their baby anyway. They're too proud to take help. The Bible says there are six things the Lord hates, yes, seven are an abomination to Him. The word abomination literally means a vile, disgusting thing. So there are things that are vile and disgusting to God. God hates a proud look. It's pride that brings us to these places. It's pride that causes us to murder our babies when God has sent someone to help us. The Bible says God hates a lying tongue. People come to these places because they believe lies. Because they've lied to themselves that God doesn't care, God doesn't see. That it's only a mass of cells, it's not really a baby. But we have to ask the question, when does it become a baby then? When does it become a baby? According to the angel Gabriel, the angel, the holy angel that stands in the presence of God, it becomes a baby at the moment of conception. 
God hates the lying tongue. God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. I want you to imagine what is more innocent than the baby in a womb. The baby in the womb that God put there in His grace, that baby's never lied or stolen. That baby has never ever coveted. That baby is innocent before God. And yet, we take its life's blood. When Cain killed Abel, God told Cain, Abel, he told Cain that Abel's blood was crying out from the ground. I used to wonder what was it saying? What was, if it was crying out to God, what was his blood saying? And the Bible literally tells us that God breathed the breath of life into man and they became a human being. And it says the life is in the blood. So when the blood pours into the ground, there's life. That life cries out to God. If you go over to Revelation, it tells us that the martyrs that were killed were asking God, when are you going to take vengeance for our death, for our unjust death? When are you going to take vengeance for us? So we have to recognize that that's what Abel's blood was saying to God. God, take vengeance. Bring justice for my life that was stolen from me. And I want you to imagine the blood that's going to pour into the ground today from your baby. That baby's blood is going to cry out to God. And it's going to cry out for justice against you. I want you to think a little further. I want you to imagine when a baby dies. It's not like when the state has to kill a murderer. A baby is innocent. It's never done anything wrong. It's innocent. I want you to imagine 63 million strong. 63 million babies that we have killed in America since Roe v. Wade. Think of all the blood that is crying out from the ground to God for justice. Sir, go get your wife. Stand up and protect your wife and your children. Protect your child. God created us all for a purpose. He created men to protect their wives and their children. Go be a man. Protect your wife. Protect your child from that murderer. What makes you so hard and so callous that you don't care? What makes you so hard and so callous? Why are you such a coward that you will not stand up to the hey doctrine guys, that's going to murder your posterity, your child, your gift from God, your reward from God, your inheritance from God? Why are you such a coward that you will not stand up to protect your child? Um, there is. There was a lady standing outside a minute ago. Because you need ago, Christ. They were, she was you need Jesus Christ to child, come and live in your heart. But she ended up going ahead and murdering her child. You need Jesus Christ inside. to so be play, your play righteousness. She had a heart, a change of heart. She would come Turn out here and him, talk with us. From this place she stood out for a long him. time and listened to Dad preach a long time ago. Long time. So trust Him before for it's her. forever too late. say God is only love. But the Bible says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. 
You and I know that God exists. You and I are aware, we know that God exists, that He is just and righteous and holy. How do we know? How do we know that God exists? The Bible says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even His eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. We could look around and we could see God's power. Let there be light and there was light. The sun comes up every morning. All things continue to exist by the word of His power. The trees that grow, that go through their seasons. When a baby is born, when a baby is conceived, it is God's power. We are without excuse. The Bible goes on in, Gen in Romans chapter 1, it says, Because although they knew God, although you know God, you do not glorify Him as God. What does that mean? Adam and Eve in the garden. God said, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. You may not eat from that tree. You can eat from everything else, but not that tree. And the devil comes down and he says, you will not surely die. God knows in the day that you eat of it, you will become like God. They were deceived. Eve was deceived. They believed the devil. And they obeyed the devil rather than God. Literally, God calls our obedience a few verses down. It says, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the, create, the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. God calls our obedience to Him worship, our belief of His word worship. But Adam and Eve, they believed the words of the devil. And they obeyed the words of the devil, therefore they worshipped the devil, the creature, the creation that God had created. And that's what we're doing, that's what's happening here today. You're believing, you're glorifying the devil. You're not glorifying God because you're believing the words of the devil. You're obeying the words of the devil. And you're not thankful for what God has given you. In the very next phrase it says that they did not glorify Him as God nor were thankful. They weren't thankful. What does that mean? God gave them all the trees of the garden from but one. God has given you all that you have. The baby in your womb, but you're not thankful. The food you've eaten today, the clothes you're wearing, the sunshine over your head and the shade from the sun. God has given you all that you have. Anything that you have, you have because He gave you breath. You're without excuse. You're worshiping the devil. You're worshiping the creature. It says they didn't glorify Him nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And that's what will happen to you. As you worship the devil, you will profess to be wise and become a fool. It literally says that professing to be wise, they became fools.